Hi, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Banglejs 2 open source smartwatch. So inside the pack, we have the watch body and the straps and the charge cable. First thing you want to do is install the straps. So just separate them. And then you want to install the top strap at the top of the watch, which is opposite the charge connector. You just hook in that side and then you pull back the little lever to pull the pin in then it should just slot in and and locate itself and the same for um, for the other strap too when you get your bangle it may be out of charge in which case um, you're going to want to attach the charge cable um, this goes in from the right hand side and just clips on like this when charging is finished um, which probably takes about two hours you um, you want to disconnect the USB cable from any power source. While there is short circuit protection in these cables, um, it's just better not to rely on it because they can just attach to other metallic things that might be on your surface. Now, when your um, bangle is charged, you just start it by long pressing the button. Um, so it should boot up straight away and do this um, this little animation and welcome screen that showing you how to use it. If you've managed to get to a, um, a, sort of a blank white screen with some blocky text on, just long press the, um, the button again and it will reboot through. That, um, that blocky text screen is a bootloader which is for recovery if something, um, something happens and you, you want to update the firmware um, at a very low level. So you can swipe backs and forwards to go through the screens here or you can press the button and when you get to the end just press the button on the right hand side uh, you get the clock screen here um, when the clock is unlocked you can just press the button to go to the launcher and then you can just swipe up and down with your finger and tap to select and most of the menus work that way um, there's the settings window here uh, where you can change a lot of stuff about your watch. Uh, one of the things we suggest you do at the start is go to LCD and and calibrate um, and you tap your finger where the crosshair is and you just have to do that 12 times in order to calibrate the display. Um, different people press the display in different ways and, um, and it helps to ensure that that um, that the device registers taps where you expect them to be tapped. Um, there's also there's an LCD timeout here, which is the amount of time it takes the LCD to um, to stay on for before the screen is completely locked. So um, when the screen's locked, one thing nothing will will work, and you need to press the button again to unlock it. Um, so if you wanted to change that, for instance, you just tap on it. Uh, and you get a set of options here that you can choose. So maybe we'll go for 15 seconds. Um, for other menu items that are numeric, um, if there are a few options, it will just show you the options. If there are more options available, um, maybe this one's a good example here, then to move the menu item, you swipe up or swipe down and then tap when you're done. Um, in the settings menu itself, um, the very top item is for apps and each app that's installed, if it chooses to, can provide you with a with various settings for that app um, and they're, they're all in there. So you, if you want to customise an app, you'll often find that there are settings available there. So pretty much the first thing you'll want to do after you get this is, is to start customising it. And to do that, you want to install some custom apps. So you do these via the app loader. This is available at um, banglejs.com forward slash apps. Um, now, you might well want to do this on a desktop computer with the Chrome web browser. You can do it on Android with Chrome, um, on desktop with Edge as well. But on iOS, you need a special browser called um, WebBLE because the... Um, because the default iOS browser doesn't come with, with web Bluetooth capability. 
Um, there is another browser available as well, um, where Beerly is a sort of $1.50 charge, I think. Um, but there are free versions of web Bluetooth browsers, which I will um, link in the description. So when you get to this window, um, you just choose which device you have. It's an idea to tap Don't Ask again. It really helps us if you send um, what apps you have installed. It's completely anonymized data, just showing the apps you have installed and the ones that you've, you've pressed the heart icon on. And that allows you to, um, to then sort by installed, sort by favorited, and to see what other people have liked and chosen. And it's a, it's a very useful thing. So to connect, you just tap connect up the top right. Um, you will see a bunch of devices shown. And by default, you will find that your bangle will have a, um, a set of letters and numbers up in the top right hand corner. And those correspond to the numbers you, you'll see here. So if you select that, tap pair, uh, the little Bluetooth symbol lights up blue and you're connected. You'll find um, that when you connect, the first time at least, um, some apps will probably need updating and you'll see a little up arrow in four. So if you tap on my apps and tap update for apps, uh, it will go through the process of, um, of replacing all of these applications with the newest versions, which just ensures that everything's, um, that you get all the best features and, and hopefully, um, you know, any bugs that have been found have been fixed. So once we've done that, we'll look at customizing it. Uh, I know a lot of people, if you have one bangle, you see there's no reason at all for having those little bits of text up the top. So we'll look here in installed applications and we find that um, there is a Bluetooth ID widget. So we'll just tap the little waste basket next to that to remove it. Um, anytime you do anything on the bangle, you'll get this um, with the app loader, you'll get a hold button to reload message and you just hold that for a second. And that's the same thing that you would do to get out of any application that you're running. Um, regardless of how, um, uh, whether the application is crashed or how it's written, you can always long press that button to, to get out of it. And the next thing we might want to do is to change the clock. Um, so I happen to quite like one called Pebble Plus Plus. So firstly, I think I'll just remove the existing clock. You don't have to, but um, it means that the new clock you put on will be loaded by default rather than you having to go into settings and change it. Next, I'll go to the library. Uh, I'll just type in Pebble. And hopefully Pebble++ plus plus clock will install that. Um, now there are a series of um, clocks that use something called clock info. Um, normally in a clock you have, um, or in fact any application, uh, you have like a line of items at the top. These are called widgets and you can install new widgets to display different information. But often in clocks you might want the information slightly bigger and you might want it to be configurable. So in these clocks you can tap on the information to select it, swipe up to go through all the different things that might be shown. For instance, that's um, the current height above sea level, um, that's the beats per minute, that's how many steps you've done today. Um, so you can choose different things and you can install new clock information modules. So now we've got this clock, we can, um, we can tap here to see all the different clock infos. Now, these show clocks as well as the things you can install. So for instance, I might want to install um, compass. I might want to install, um, uh, there's a stopwatch and information on sunrise and sunset. So now we can just long press this button and um, now we can swipe up and swipe down. This will go through the default list of, of widgets. 
So this is how much sunshine is left when the sun sets, when the sun rises. This is the compass, which um, you have to calibrate it by turning it around the first time before it will work. But then obviously it will always point in to north. Um, things like this update very often will run your battery down a bit quicker. Um, so it's always an idea to make sure that you you don't leave it on those in case you really want them. Um, the other thing you can do is you can swipe left and right, which chooses a different um, a different class of clock info. So for instance, this one is the stopwatch. So if now it's selected, you can tap it and the stopwatch will start running. You, you can tap to stop um, and then you can sort of swipe to get back to whatever you, you wanted. Um, so yeah, you can, that's sort of clock faces. You can still see a whole bunch of other other apps as well. Um, if you do need to update the firmware, so um, so this app loader is for loading the applications and the firmware is like the operating system version. Um, so to update that, you go to firmware update uh, and it will show you what your current firmware is and show you a list of releases. Um, so releases are the kind of recommended firmwares, but also we have cutting edge builds, which are um, builds which are made from the very latest changes. Like if someone makes a change to the Esprino interpreter, um, this file will update a few minutes later with the most recent changes. So, um, so you get more features, things might be faster, but things may occasionally be more broken as well. Um, so if you want to load one, all you do is you click that button and when the upload button appears, you tap it and then you have to wait for a few minutes for it to upload all the firmware to the watch. And then the watch will reboot and will reapply the firmware. So um, yeah, there are, there are loads of different applications you can install. Um, if you are going to um, get notifications from your watch, um, so notifications from your phone, then you'll want either the Android integration app for Android, um, and then you install the Gadget Bridge app on your phone, or you install the iOS integration app. And then after that, when you restart your Bangle, you should be able to pair it with your phone. Um, you won't get quite the same amount of features, but you don't need any extra app to be installed on iOS to make this work. Um, another thing to note is that because Bangle Jest 2 has a GPS, um, you don't often notice on telephones, but um, in order to make GPS get a fix very quickly, you need this assisted GPS data, and that has to be downloaded from the internet. So, um, so if you want to update GPS data, just tap that button. Um, just using GPS seems to be the most power efficient and at the moment the easiest option. Uh, and then you just click upload. And in a few seconds, uh, it doesn't take very long, that will update the GPS data. And then when you use something that uses the GPS, um, it will get a fix an awful lot more quickly. Uh, there are some other options in here. If you go to more, um, there is the ability to um, uh, set the time on the Bangladesh. This is done automatically, but um, at some points you may just want to, to trigger it to, um, to set it. You can um, reinstall apps. This one keeps your app data, but it um, just reinstalls all the software for your apps. If something bad happens, you might want that. And obviously install default apps will just bring it back to almost a factory reset point. Um, you can also file an issue with an application on GitHub, which includes information about all your currently installed apps, which helps us a lot to, to debug. Um, and Backup and restore allow you to back up all the contents of your watch to a zip file and then restore from that zip file, which is a good idea to do occasionally. Um, and also, if you have an issue, it can help us reproduce that issue. Um, yeah, and then um, there's a bit of information here as well, which um, which helps about your current firmware version and all the applications you have installed. And um, that's probably all you need to get started with the bangle. Thanks for watching.